Hello, in this short video we're going to look at the transistor. We're interested in transistors because they are the lowest level building block of microprocessors. A transistor is an electronic amplifier. To see it in operation we need to put in a circuit and I have one here. So here is the transistor, same as this one. This circle, the bar and the arrow, is the symbol we use for a transistor in a diagram. It's got three legs, collector, emitter and base. Roughly speaking, the base is what controls the amount of current that can flow from the collector to the emitter. To make it do something, we need to provide power, so I have a 5 volt power supply. Connecting the 5 volts through a resistor to the collector of the transistor. Give myself a choice of resistors so we can change things later on. And we're going to start with a small value of 50 ohms. The emitter of the transistor we've connected to the zero volts. And the base of connected to a control. Gain, gain through a resistor. I've got a choice of resistors. And we're going to start with a large resistor of 10,000 ohms. Now the transistor is an electronic amplifier and it amplifies current. So we need to look at the current flowing. To do that I've attached some meters to the circuit. So this meter is measuring the current which is flowing into the collector of the transistor. And this meter is measuring the amount of current that is flowing into the base of the transistor. All of the current that flows into these two legs must come out through the emitter. The meters are measuring milliamps of current. So let's see it in action. Start to increase the control. And to begin with, nothing much seems to be happening. No current is flowing. Get to a certain point. At some point. And we start to see a small current, very small current, flowing into the base of the transistor. And we also, at the same time, start to see current flowing into the collector of the transistor. And this current is quite a lot larger than this current. And as I increase um, the control input, this current increases, so does this one. And the relationship stays much the same. This one increases, this one increases, and stays, roughly speaking, a few hundred times larger than this one. And it continues like this, um, for this particular circuit until I get to the maximum that I can uh, input can get to and at this point we have round about half a milliamp going into the base of the transistor and round about 90 milliamps going into the collector of the transistor. If I wind back the control it's the same but backwards so decreasing current into the base and decreasing current into the collector this current stays, roughly speaking, a few hundred times larger than this one. And this is the transistor acting as an electronic amplifier of electric current. Here we are, back at the beginning. And that's pretty much it, um, as far as the mega processor is concerned. If you wanted to make a hi-fi audio system, then the rela exact relationship between these is more subtle. Um, but for what we need to do, um, that's pretty much the whole story as far as current is concerned. Um, now it's volts which make current flow. So let's see what's happening with the voltages. I'm going to start on the input side. So this meter here is measuring the voltage at the base of the transistor. And this meter is measuring the control voltage that I was applying. So if we go through the sequence, we start with a small voltage. Um, no current is flowing, and this voltage is much the same as this one here. And this is because this kind of transistor needs just round about half a volt before it wakes up and takes an interest in the volt. Um, so until that happens, it's not allowing any current to flow, and so this voltage must track this one. If we get to that half a volt or so. This is when we start to see current flowing 
into the base of the transistor. So the transistor is now awake and starting to do its thing. And from this point on, this voltage won't change very much. It'll creep up a little bit, up to 0 0.7, 0 0.8. Um, but that's, um, so, yes, so that'll stay round about that level. And this, as this voltage increases, we get an increasing voltage drop across this resistor, which is giving us our larger current, which the transistor is allowing to pass. And at the same time as allowing this to pass, the transistor is allowing this much larger current to pass down here for the collector. So this is on the way up. Um, we get to the maximum that I uh, can provide on the control input, which is five volts. And this is where we had our half a milliamp into the base, 90 milliamps or so going into the collector. And our voltage at the base is sort of 0.7 or five of a volt. So now if I wind back the control, the currents behave as we saw before. And stop, once we get to our 0.5 of a volt or so, the current stops. And now this voltages go back down to zero. So that was the input side of things. So let's look at the output now. I've labeled this part of the circuit the output. And I'm measuring it with this meter here. So currently it's at five volts. I'm also measuring the current dropped across the resistor here. And at the moment, no current flowing, that's a zero. This is a five volt system. So up to here is five volts. So these two meters must add up to five. So now if I start to um, increase the control input. Um, as before, when we're below the threshold to wake up the transistor, no current is flowing, there's no voltage drop here, so that output is at 5 volts. Once we get above the threshold, the current is starting to flow, we start to develop a voltage across this resistor here, and our output voltage starts to drop. So, as I increase this here, more current flows, this voltage increases and that output drops further. You'll notice it's a fairly smooth transfer. There's a small increase here and we get a small decrease of our output voltage. Again, small increase here, small decrease there. And that continues until we get to the maximum that I can provide on our input. And we have our 90 milliamps flowing through the collector and that's causing about four and a half volt drop across this resistor here. So output is about half a volt. If I reverse the process as before, it's the same but backwards. Um, small decrease of our input voltage, we get a small increase of our output voltage. And the relationships stay like this until we back where we started. Now we talk of the transistor as being an electronic amplifier, amplifying current. But it doesn't create current, it's allowing current to flow. And that current comes from the power supply. And we're asking that power supply to push the current through this resistor here. That's a 50 ohm resistor, it's a 5 volt power supply, so the maximum current that could be the power supply could provide is 100 milliamps. The largest we got to um, before was 90 milliamps. So that limit from the power supply isn't affecting the behavior of the circuit. But we can change the configuration. First thing we're going to do is we're going to decrease this resistor here. So instead of being 10,000 ohms, I'm going to change it to being 1,000 ohms. So it's a tenth of the resistance, so we expect 10 times as much current to flow into the base of the transistor for a given input voltage. The other thing we're going to do is make it much harder for the power supply to provide the current. So instead of 50 ohms, uh, we're going to put 1,000 ohms here. 
So a five volt power supply, um, thousand ohms, maximum current that a power supply can provide is five milliamps. So let's go through the sequence. As before, um, small voltage, we're below the threshold for the transistor to switch on and no current is flowing, our output voltage is at 5 volts. Increase it to a little bit above the threshold and we notice our output voltage is dropping very rapidly. Don't need to go much further and its output voltage has dropped to zero. It's much more dramatic, much faster transition. So the transistor is acting as a switch. We'll do that again. So we'll get it just below the threshold and our output is at 5 volts. And then we'll do a small increase here and we'll see our output drop very quickly to 0 volts. And this is because with this arrangement we're exhausting the capability of the power supply with, um, to provide current much more quickly. It makes it much more sensitive to the um, control input. Now that we um, are at this point here with the um, output voltage low at near close to zero, this can, can't go any further, so it stays at zero. And we've topped out the uh, amount of current that the power supply can provide. So the five milliamps um, is going into the collector, and that can't increase because the power supply can't provide any more current um, through this. Uh, resistor. So this is the way up. I can take the voltage or control input all the way up to 5 volts, but it's not causing any other effect on the output. If I wind back the control, it stays much the same as you might expect. Output stays at 0 volts until I get close to the threshold to turn on the transistor. And then when I um, get to just below the threshold for the, resist, for the transistor, our output swings back to 5 volts. So this is the transistor acting as a switch. Something to notice about this circuit is that the control is a voltage and the output is a voltage. So you can perhaps start to see how you could have a large number of these circuits, this one controlling another, controlling another, controlling another, to do something interesting like create a processor. If you wanted to create a processor, then these circuits need to be performing logical operations. And a logical operation is one which takes one or more inputs, combines them according to certain rules to generate the output. Different set of rules, different logical operation. As it happens, this circuit provides our first logical operation. If we look at it in broad terms, if we put a low input, we get a high output. If we have a high input, we get a low output. So you get out the opposite of what you put in. This is the inversion operation. We can encapsulate it in a little table like this. Low in, high out, high in, low out. It's quite a simple operation. It's quite useful. The mega processor uses um, quite a few of these in various ways. If you want to do a more complex operation, we need to use more transistors. So the next thing to do is to look at two transistors.